grandmother, my maternal grandmother, church-going lady, a deacon of her church, told me one day, young man, never waste a microphone or the pulpit, so I'm not going to tonight. <laughs> now, I'm not going to preach to you, but I am going to testify. <laughs> so bear with me. I've been described as, as a successful businessman and of late as a philanthropist, but I think of myself as a work in progress. I think of myself as someone who is deeply curious, interested, and invested in inspiring aspiration, achievement, and ambition in young people and not so young people so that they can do what I hope I'm doing is make change in the world. And I feel emboldened to talk to you tonight because I think most of you in the room want to make change. Many of the people, many people in the world want to make change. And I find, I've learned, that you don't struggle with the what or the where or the why, but you sometimes are paralyzed by the how. So I want to share with you what I think are my four overlapping spheres of influence on the pathway to becoming better at making change. The personal challenge, developing the skills and belief and confidence that you can make change and deserve to make change. The outside world challenge, which is developing resilience and perspective so that you can push back and climb over the setbacks as they come along the way. The inside challenge, which is cultivating family and friends, your village, your people, to be an asset and not a problem. And the last one is a call to action, and I'll come back to that later, because that's the baby steps of getting started. The personal challenge, there's this phrase I like and I've liked for a long time, and I wish I wrote it and created it. It says, life is tricky, stay in your magic, baby, right? And I think it so, so accurately describes the essence of developing, practicing, perfecting, and being at peace with your own special brand of magic. Now, there are some that get that right away. Some develop over time. But I think it's a, of critical importance that you get that, understand it, and practice it. Finding yourself, knowing yourself, being yourself. Cultivating your superpower, your special brand, and using that. Now me, I think my superpowers are these. I think that I am relatively good at taking hard to know or hard to understand concepts and making them easy to understand and more accessible. At some level, we're testing that tonight. <laughs> I think I'm also someone who is particularly good at convening, creating events, initiatives, organizations that people are inspired by and aspire to join. And that allows me to bring scale and numbers to the things I'm most passionate about. I believe that one's ability to overcome life struggles and the impediments to making change are a direct correlation to two things. One, really knowing your superpowers, knowing where and when you use your special abilities and double down to create solutions to problems. And then secondly, Developing an ability, and this is a really important one as well, developing an ability to cast away the inevitable disappointments and despair that comes from knowing that you can't be good at everything. We've all felt that. It's true, I use the example all the time. Like, use your superpowers and don't be worried about the other ones. Do you think Wonder Woman was spending time looking at Superman and going, why does he have x-ray vision and I don't? <laughs> or did she just go about using that golden lasso to do what she does best and squeeze the truth out of adversaries? That's what she did. Knowing, owning, and curating your special powers is really powerful. It allows you to ration yourself in a busy and demanding world. It allows you 
to double down when you know you can solve a problem. It allows you to be more productive and more effective. And more importantly, it's infectious. It creates followership. I really do believe that people gravitate to, invest in, and invest with people who know themselves, who are comfortable with themselves and comfortable with what they do every day. Integrity and authenticity matter. Pay attention. That's our, that's our personal challenge. Now, the outsider world challenge is perspective and resilience. And so I want to give you an example of you know, some of my perspective. So here I am, 10 or 11 years old, sitting in my house just outside of Boston. It's a Saturday morning. My brothers and I were active in sports. We don't have practice, so we're watching cartoons, as you do. And on television, we're watching The Flintstones. You know that cartoon about a prehistoric family, right? And something's bothering me as I'm watching The Flintstones, and I get to the end and I realize there's no black people in The Flintstones. <laughs> There's no one that looks like me or my brothers. And that's bad enough, but a half an hour later, I'm watching the Jetsons. Space age story, 150, 250 years in the future. I get to the story, end of the story and I'm going, dang, there's no black people in the Jetsons. So there's no black people in the past. There's no <laughs> black people in the future. So what am I to think about where I fit in and my brothers fit in? And that's perspective. I think back to that time now because I'm not confused anymore. The world is in the most significant and rapid change and transfer of power, privilege, wealth, and entitlement that we've ever seen. It's not as fast as everyone wants every day, as I want some days, but we, I have perspective that it used to be different. I used to not know where I fit in the narrative, and look at me now. I'm on my second continent, my third business. I'm considered successful. I've, you know, I've, I'm a philanthropist. I'm not, you know, Flintstone's time, it's, it's, it's not relevant anymore. But when I have bad days, as we do, I think about the next thing. And here's a question I've asked myself, and then I've asked many people, and I'm gonna ask you now, don't answer out loud, okay? If, I, if you had the choice right now to take on and be in the here and now and take on the struggles of today as they exist in the here and now, or right now I could transport you and you could stand in the shoes of your parents or grandparents or great-grandparents, what would you choose? And you don't have to answer, because I know. <laughs> you choose the here and now, because our challenges, as frustrating and, and, and terrible as they feel, pale in comparison to what our forefathers and foremothers went through. That's right. And on my really bad days, and this gets a bit, a bit emotional for everyone, I think I'm somewhere between four and five generations from being somebody's property. Really, that's nothing in the history of the world. So I have a challenge in front of me. I've got to overcome someone who doesn't see it my way or move somewhere, and I think, Flintstones, Jetsons, I'll take now. Parents, grandparents, I'll take now. Being somebody's property, I'll take now. That's the perspective, that's our outside challenge. Now our inside challenge, and this is the hard truth. We, however you want to define we, our people don't do enough to support each other. And it's, it's a quiet little dirty secret that we'd rather look good than be good, right? That we say the right things and we believe in theory, but we can't put it into practice enough. And I don't want to just talk about you know, this community or this village here, but I'm going to for a second. We don't do it as well as other groups, not even close. We're not even in the league table, right? I've seen this in business. I've seen it in charity. You know, I've seen it on two continents and around the world. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you gotta hear it twice. <laughs> a 
No, I have. I've seen it in business and in charity, and most recently as the founding non-executive chair of the Impact X Fund. It's a fund, a venture capital fund, headquartered here in the UK, by us and for us to invest in underrepresented minority entrepreneurs in the UK and Europe. And everyone thinks it's a great idea. There's a concept in business that says, the man who owns the gold makes the rules. And that, what that means is that if you have economic entitlement, you can shape the narrative. How it goes, who's included, what the outcomes are. The person that owns the gold makes the rules, and everyone thinks that's a great idea. I actually see some sparky faces right now going, yeah, mm -hmm. In theory, everyone does, but I've seen time and time again, when it comes to share our most precious resources, you'll help, you'll make a call, you'll find a friend, you'll make an introduction, or let me say that bad word, you'll share some of your money. We fall down, we don't climb up that hill, and we have to do better. We aren't supporting ourselves well enough, yet we turn around and ask the rest of the world to include us, invest in us, give to us, and share with us. It has to start at home. So now, about now, uh, many people are saying, he had four things, and that's three. So what's the last one? So I'm going to go back to my grandmother, because there's, this is really sums up the, the baby steps. Another time, not when she was reminding me about the microphone in the pulpit, she said, Richard, and, and she called me Richard when I was either in trouble, I really need to pay attention. <laughs> she said, I believe it takes an entire village to build a single point of greatness. I want to say that again. It takes an entire village to build a single point of greatness. And then she went on in a nice way, as was her manner, to share with me the sacrifices that she felt she made over her life. The things that she did, the prejudices that she withstood, the challenges that she overcame to move a few stones in her village, her family, to make it better for me, my brothers, my cousins, my parents, et cetera. And she said, I'm still well, but I'm tired. And now it's your turn. It's, it's time for you, your brothers and your cousins, to go build me a village. Find your stones. And so tonight, even though I've challenged you to think about those personal things, the outside challenge, and our village family challenge, the inside challenge, I have one more. I'm asking you to go figure out what are your one or two stones that you're motivated and passionate enough to move, to shape, to build your village, to build the village, to build our village. Find your stones. Understand, use, and master your magic move some stones, be or continue to be the change that reshapes our world. Thank you.